Minnesota Aurora, winners of six consecutive matches to open the 2023 season, returns home to open a two-match homestand. They welcome division foe Green Bay Glory. Along with former NWSLer Danny Foxhoven Young, I'm Jake Griffith. Thanks for joining us here on Fox 9 Plus. We open today's broadcast with what might come across as the obvious, a different venue today. We are not at TCO Stadium because of air quality and the changing winds and the Canadian wildfires to the north. This has shifted this match indoors to the St. Croix Valley Indoor Recreation Center. We are absolutely missing the fantastic fans at TCO Stadium. Danny was looking to be close to a sellout prior to the movement. I know both teams are really upset to not be playing in front of that amazing environment, in front of that amazing crowd tonight, but I know both teams are excited there's just going to be a game, so we'll take it. As they say, the show goes on. That brings us to tonight's match. As we mentioned, Minnesota have won six consecutive matches, coming off a 3-1 win over Chicago City on the road. Denny, another impressive performance for this Minnesota team. Yeah, it was. They grinded it out. It was a very tough game. It was a super small field. The conditions were quite windy, which makes it always an exciting game. A kind of level sets both teams. Uh, but it was a really exciting game, and at the end of the day, Minnesota Aurora came out with a win. Aurora handing Chicago City their first loss of the regular season. Now Aurora five points clear of Bavarian United and Chicago City in the Heartland Division table as we see it. Down there in fourth, four points back of City SC and Bavarian United is Green Bay Glory. This time last year, Danny, this Green Bay team came in, stole a point from Aurora at TCO Stadium, and now... Still a lot on the line with playoff implications. Yeah, there is. It, Green Bay is, is a really close rival, and it's going to be an exciting game tonight. We'll head to break on Fox 9+. Plus. When we return, we'll take a look at how these sides line up.
nine plus a chance now to take a look at the starting 11 presented by st paul college danny rolling out a new formation are the aurora tonight a three six one what do you like about it yeah we saw it last game against chicago city super impressive three center backs which is really unique six midfielders you can see the depth of minnesota aurora in in how coach lukic is wanting them to come out and play as for green bay glory the traditional 4-3-3 formation they will start the 17 year old larissa likes in goal the whistle sounds and we are underway Up ahead to Langdock on the near side. And that win for Minnesota away against Chicago City. Outshot City SC 8-0 in the match's first 25 minutes. Six of those on goal, two corners. Now here's a good ball over the top. Langdock looking for the cross, quickly in. And an early strike for Minnesota. Aurora, their 30th goal of the campaign. What an incredible ball that started with Morgan Stone over the top to Kenzie Langdock running on, getting to the end line in typical Minnesota Aurora form, getting to the end line across, back across the face of the goal, and a beautiful finish to the far post. This angle, I think you could see it perfectly. I mean, there's no chance anybody could save that. And what an incredible way to start this game. That was literally from kickoff. Hannah Adler, yep. Adler with her seventh of the season. That goal, the cultivated CBD charity goal, took just 75 seconds for Minnesota to find the back of the net. Minnesota Aurora must be still feeling some energy like they were in front of the fans as they wanted to be. Uh, I hope that they are coming out and showing everybody who's watching. We're still here. We're still ready to play. We're coming out ready to go. Anytime you have a change like this, especially being put inside an arena, no fans allowed in tonight, it does complicate the equation a bit. There were obvious questions about how both these teams would perform, and that's a good way to start out for Minnesota. Yeah, it absolutely is. There's some interesting things that come along with having to make such quick adjustments and playing in a new venue. Not, It's not just like, yeah, we pick up and play, you know, now we're moving indoors. There's things like we need to get our equipment over. We need to shift our mentality. Um, there's a lot that goes with it. Aurora back on the front foot here just toward the end line and the flag comes up that will be offside for minnesota regardless another early opportunity yeah minnesota aurora definitely has the mentality to keep getting forward you can see that and they and they are going they're going getting right after it this is a rival game these two teams have seen each other almost as much of of anybody in this you know who was a part of the league last year so they are very familiar with each other the coaching staffs are very familiar with each other there's a lot of mutual respect there you know we know how you play we know how you want to come out and make this game so i know that both teams are coming into this game feeling like there's you know there's ex some excitement in playing a rival one thing aurora coach nicole lukic talked to us about earlier this week as another early build up here for Aurora back to Stone. Now Langdock providing the whip. Tried to go back to Adler. But one thing Nicole Lukic talked about with us earlier this week, her relationship with some of the coaches on the staff, namely Sarah Hagen, who she played with collegiately. Yeah, I actually did as well, not collegiately, but um, played with her back at the youth national team. So, you know, the soccer world is very small, and we know each other <laughs> quite often. Sarah is a, is a wonderful person, a wonderful coach, and I know, like I said, there's a lot of mutual respect between these two coaching staffs because of just history there. Aurora, give it up. It will be a Green Bay throw. Minnesota leads the all-time series between these sides 2-0 and 1. We mentioned the, t the draw in our broadcast open. Minnesota followed that up with two dominant victories in Green Bay, Wisconsin to close the regular season last year. This is the first meeting between the sides this season. 
Yeah, Green Bay so far is the only team to inch a point away from Minnesota Aurora in get in um, division play. So, like I said, there is a lot of history with these two teams, and I know that that's something that Green Bay has the back of in the back of their mind. They know that they can do this. They've done it before. They scored a late goal in the opening game at TCO Stadium against Minnesota Aurora in their inaugural season. So, I mean, that was a really big deal. Uh, and they can, they surely know they can do it again in any venue. A turnover here and a counterattack for Minnesota. Langdock pushing forward now. Here's Cat Rap. Left off for Wynn, and that shot blocked away. Smart clearance from Green Bay just to take the pressure off. Aurora will have the throw. It's Kafusi on the near side. Now the way that this 3-6-1 is starting to shape up here. Hanson carrying it wide and that poked through. Is really looking like you can see here Kelsey Kafusi really high up the field even though technically she's a center back. Almost becoming a winger. Um, getting into the attack, trying to make a cross, getting the ball into the box. So it's going to be a really, I mean it's a very interesting formation. Uh, clearly, Coach Lukic has some ideas of what she wants to see. She wants to encourage her team to be very uh, attacking-minded, which we have said this whole season. But to me, a 3-6-1 is by far the most attacking that we've seen her put into a formation this year. As Langdock, that high press wins it back for Minnesota. The cross. Win. And that shot blocked away. Second effort in front of goal, and Rapp pokes it home. Cat Rap doubles the Aurora advantage. It was back to back shots there. Uh, Mariah Wynn with a knuckleball there almost. I mean, great block by Green Bay Glory there on the first one. Uh, I don't know whose foot that bounced that landed out here on the rebound. Oh, that was Hannah Adler. Cat Rap bringing it down and turning and getting a shot off. I mean, there was, there was four or five unmarked players in the box there. It was kind of just bouncing around. Um, unlucky for Green Bay that it landed at the foot of Cat Rap, but a great finish. And a good job by Minnesota Aurora to have that many players in the in the in the box. Much like we've seen all season, Aurora capitalizing on early opportunities. Yeah, so far there hasn't been that many moments for Green Bay even to keep the ball. This is probably the most amount of passes they've connected so far, um, and definitely the furthest up the field they've gotten with the ball in possession. Filman had it, couldn't fight off the challenge from Tiana Harris. Good recovery by Hanson to clean up the mess. Good choice there by Tiana Harris. You see long ball and then just getting the team up the field as quickly as you can, which again is something we've talked about throughout the season. Coach Lukic's idea of winning the ball as far up the field as possible so that we can make opportunities from something that we don't have to create. For Green Bay, coming off a 3-1 win home against Rochester FC on Sunday, they sweep their season series, so to speak, with the Loons. They were very clinical in that match. Yeah, absolutely. It was. It, you can see that as teams get more comfortable with each other, the cleanliness, the technicality of each game, uh, the the rhythm has started to become a little bit more clear. You can start to see a little bit more of some identity of each of these teams come out in the way that they want to play, what they're trying to do. It might not come off every time, but they are. You know, you can see that they're be getting cleaner at it. So you know that's the fun part about the as we get into the back half of the season is it's just it's better soccer honestly glory took only two shots on goal in the first 25 minutes of that match both of those were goals <laughs> their third <laughs> that's goal, a pretty good stat <laughs> right? their third goal of the match came only on their fourth shot on goal just minutes into the second half that is uh, almost the epitome of clinical <laughs> that is yes You can see here how much, how comfortable Minnesota Aurora is on the ball. They want it at each other's feet. They want to get in behind. They're playing fast. Ball loose inside the 18. Green Bay can't clear it away, and they finally do. 
That's a heads-up clearance from the center back just to take the pressure off. I think that whole build-up was a quintessential moment of what Coach Lukic wants to see. Comfortable playing in the back until we all decide we're ready to go, and then they all go for it, and the whole team moves together going up the field. Really perfect play there. Wynn has it, now cutting in. That's a strong challenge applied there by Alyssa Miracle and another clearance. Aurora, they have thrived at times this season by just throwing numbers into the box and congesting things. Uh, we saw it earlier, ball bouncing around, and so another smart clearance from the defender. It does concede a corner, however. Adler will take this one, and they short the corner to Wickers. Wickers tried to lob one into the box. Wynn will chase that down. Rap, great job to win that back. Aurora cough it up, though. That was a really prime example of the challenges of playing on an indoor venue. Is actually, uh, It was a corner kick, and you saw Hannah Adler actually step up and play short, which is not something we've seen Minnesota Aurora do that much this season. They typically like to get the ball in the box and go for a goal-scoring opportunity. Uh, but because we're indoor, the, the sidelines are really close to the walls, and they don't have very much space to be able to back up to come and kick the ball. So um, that's, that's one of the difficulties of a change of venue. Green Bay with the throw. And it's immediately headed back out. Those corners have been so crucial for Minnesota this year, averaging 8.8 .8 per match, 53 total on the year coming into this. They've only conceded 13. Yeah, that's pretty amazing that they've only conceded that many. It's also pretty amazing that they have been able to have that many for them. Uh, so that's pretty, yeah, that's a pretty spectacular stat. I do think that speaks to the amount that they are just trying to get into the attacking third, and that's going to, just being in that area is going to create opportunities. And I know that's something that Coach Lukic has really harped on about trying to be more dangerous when we're off set pieces, off of corners. Um, trying to turn those into goal-scoring opportunities. Green Bay will have the throw after it deflects off the boot there of Mackenzie Langdock. Mackenzie Langdock is a player that we have seen in multiple different positions this year, uh, so far this season. She has been, now you can see that she is uh, on the right side of the field, almost the right midfielder. We've also seen her in the back. We've seen her on the left side. We've seen her on the right side. She is a super versatile player, and I think that's something Coach Lukic loves about her, and obviously she creates opportunities just by her work ethic, by getting forward, by you know, trying to connect with other players. She's she's a really, really fun player to watch. First foul of the match, Green Bay will have the free kick off of it. Green Bay undefeated away from home this year. Went 3-0-3 three, oh, three away last season. That ball caroms around. Looked like it was an opportunity for Green Bay. Win gets it back for Aurora. And flat out outrunning everyone. Mariah Wynn, that is her specialty. She picked the ball up well within Minnesota Aurora's half, probably 10 yards within it, won it, and got at probably four players there just by herself, drawing players out. She recognized that the, the Green Bay was super high line and just tried to get at them herself. Almost created an opportunity for Maya Hansen there. Christina Jezuski throws it in for Green Bay, and Glory promptly give it away. Adler able to find Hansen battling there. 
Maya Hansen so good at popping into that space just in front of the back line, holding off her defender. She kept it at her feet enough to let players around her get forward. The midfielders get forward and around her, and then she played it back because she had relieved the pressure enough for Minnesota Aurora to keep the ball. Just really spectacular play by her. Even though Aurora jumped on Green Bay early with the two quick goals, you can see a little bit of a different approach, more settling into the match now that they have that advantage. That's something that Nicole Lukic told us she wanted to see them improve upon. Less all gas, no breaks like they have been in some of their previous home matches. Yeah, that, like you said, that is something that she has harped upon a lot. I do think she has said it multiple times this season, but I think it's coming to a point where it's something that they really need to address because the team as a whole likes to go forward at such pace all the time it's almost a hundred percent all the time and then that makes it really hard if you lose the ball to then have to play a hundred percent on defense as well so she's saying if we have the ball let's calm it down let's take some breaths let's slow the momentum down and then when we're all ready to go we can go at a hundred percent and we we know our legs are going to be there I do think she's leaned into the subs to allow her team to be able to keep up at that 100%. But as we get into the late season and you start to see the roster and the, the 11 that are on the field become a little bit more consistent, I don't think that that's something they can keep up the pace for for 90 minutes or 120 minutes. They're going to have to start building in rest on the field. Harris will swing it back over to Kafusi off the recycle. Wynn now surveys her options going forward. Tried to split the two defenders and that cleared away. A short clearance though as Wickers keeps the possession alive. I do like to see that these three center backs essentially are getting so involved, wanting their foot on the ball, and it's actually allowing Minnesota Aurora to keep possession in Green Bay's half uh, with comfort, with a lot of space still, because they're able to spread the field so wide. You can see them going from right to left and right to left, looking for what, where to go, when to go forward, before having to make any decisions. It's allow, like we said before, it's allowing the team a second to breathe, and now here they go. When tight roping the end line, it's still live in front and finally scooped up. Keeper play has been somewhat of a point of contention for Green Bay as we take a look at this replay and a, a great job by Wynn. Mariah Wynn's specialty there, getting to the end line, beating her player on the outside, getting a cross off. That's exactly what Mariah Wynn wants to see every single time, and I love that about her. It's not like she's hiding it, and yet she still beats them, you know, 98% of the time. We mentioned earlier, though, for Green Bay, starting the 17-year-old Larissa Likes in goal. Last match, they had to start Ashley LeCount, the former Sacred Heart goalkeeper, actually class of 2001, just simply because of injury. Mallory Karen suffered an injury late in their match against Chicago City SC in the 88th minute. That ended up being, she was injured on what ended up being the match winning goal for Chicago City. This is what's fun about this league is that you do have this generational or intergenerational play between players that might be 15 and some that might be pushing 40. And that's the really fun part about it. I love to see that. It's almost like how many European leagues are, are set up. You, you see that all the time. So I love that about this league. It's really fun. It allows for players with a little bit more experience and some that don't have that much experience to be able to learn from each other. We saw it earlier this year with NC Courage U23 signing of Heather O'Reilly came out of retirement. <laughs> the joke on Twitter was NC Courage U39s now instead of <laughs> U23s, but it's, it's a lot of the same concept. As we take a look at the replay of the foul here. Great battle there by Mariah Wynn. Ended up in a foul, but um, 
you know, great play by both of them, just really battling it out. You can see the rivalry really coming to a physicality here in this game. That was Alyssa Miracle who was whistled for that foul. Headed toward goal and right in front was Likes able to scoop that up. Again, a lot of congestion in front of the goal. Yeah, that's always really hard. Those, those set pieces are hard because defensively, Green Bay Glory is dropping everybody back as quickly as they can. They hold a high line to not let anybody just be able to sit on top of their goalie. And then immediately as the ball is kicked, they all drive, drop back as quickly as they can, which just puts a ton of congestion in front of the goal. Makes oftentimes space for, uh, for, um, for, for goals that are... What are you... For goals that are own goals is the word I was looking for. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> own goals. To be fair, I, I didn't have the word on the tip of my tongue either, so you're not alone there. <laughs> Another whistle and a foul against Green Bay. Aurora will have the free kick near the midfield stripe. Take a look at the replay of the foul and an arm. That's Carolina Gomez. Just got up a little high there on Hannah Adler. Good footwork there by Hannah Adler trying to play out between those two players. Just tight little space. Green Bay Glory doing a good job to defend from the top down, but just ended up in a free kick there. Team's trading possessions, and that is where Harris will guide it back to Amanda Porval. The interesting thing here about, again, playing a 4-3-3 against a 3-6-1, essentially you do have three forwards that could be sitting right up on Minnesota Aurora's back three, but they're not. They're actually holding back quite a bit, trying to let the play happen in front of them, maybe not hold hu such high of a line, let Minnesota Aurora have the ball you know, in their back half rather than trying to press high and win it high. It's very different than the mentality that Coach Lukic has for Minnesota Aurora, as we've discussed, wanting to win the ball as high up the field as possible. So you just see the different mentalities and the different identities coming out between these two teams. Green Bay will have the throw. Two early goals for Minnesota Aurora. If you're just joining us, one coming just 75 seconds into the match. Glory looking for a response of their own. Harris able to fight off that challenge from Maggie Thillman. That's a perfect example of something that Coach Lukic has talked to us about is having players behind you all the time. So you have your pressure, you have, but then you also have your cover. So Tiana Harris stepped up, won the ball there. She was trying to play out because she was in pressure. And Kelsey Kafusi and Abby Ostrom actually dropped in behind her to cover her in case she lost the ball. They were able to play out, but you could see just how, how well this team is playing together and moving around each other based on what the field and the play is giving them. They go forward to Adler, and that's off the left foot of Adler and out for a Green Bay throw. We've talked so much about Aurora's goal-scoring ability Minnesota did not score their 29th goal of the season until 11 matches in. In fact, it came against Green Bay on the road. Now 30 goals and just now their seventh match of the season. Yeah, they are definitely on a mission to win Team Golden Boot, I think. <laughs> There's Cat Rap with it. Rap takes a tumble, and Green Bay back on it. The momentum here has shifted a little bit. I think Minnesota Aurora has become a little bit comfortable with trying to play around the back. 
Green Bay has won the ball here, tried to keep a little bit more possession in the midfield and tried to do a little bit more of counterattacking, just throwing players forward here. So it's, uh, you can see, you can feel the momentum shifting a little bit and you can hear the coaching staff, since we're so close, <laughs> saying, you know, keep it moving, keep it moving. We need to keep the pace up. Slips that ball forward to Rap. Now Rap, a little hesitation. Left off for Hanson and a great save from Larissa Likes. Her second stop of the match. So we take a look at this, started, this replay. Yes, yeah, started here in midfield again with Cat Rap. Good little footwork. Sliding the ball through to Maya Hansen. If Maya can put that in the corner, bottom corner there. It's a goal every time, but a great run by her, a little slicing run, and obviously wonderful play between Cat and Maya. Here's Rap in on goal. Cat Rap buries it. 3-0 the lead for Minnesota in the first half. Just a matter of time before that goal was coming. They were they were itching for it right up the middle of the field. There was a couple times there was a couple times where they got the ball at their feet. You can see here, starting with Kenzie Langdock, ball straight into Cat Rap. She knew exactly where she was going, right down the middle, pulled the goalie out and slid it right into the bottom corner there. What a wonderful finish. What a season the FIU Panther is having. Another brace for Cat Rap. That's five goals on the season and now five assists as well. We talked about the team golden boot, but there is a little bit of a competition going for the, <laughs> the golden boot within Minnesota Aurora here. There's uh, always a new player vying for it between Maya Hansen, Hannah Adler, Cat Rap. It's fun to watch. Adler, the leader in the clubhouse right now with seven goals, a team high. Speaking of Adler, back on it, tried to give it up to Langdock, and it was intercepted. Stone returns the favor with the takeaway. Out wide to Hansen. The cross in, still alive, and cleared away. Stone. The cross again. Wynn fires it over the bar. How fun to see Morgan Stone. <laughs> this is how different and unique this team is and the strategy that Coach Lukic is putting out there right now. Morgan Stone is a holding midfielder. She is a defensive midfielder for everybody who's watching, essentially. And there she is getting the ball crossing it from a wide flank end line position it just so dynamic this team they're so fun to watch langdock intercepts it once again now langdock will get it back hard collision in the midfield Jazuski is still down in a heap, and that will bring about a stoppage to this match. While they take a look at Christina Jazuski on the field, a chance to look at the USLW Team of the Month for May featuring Minnesota's Tiana Harris as the captain of the Team of the Month. You look at some of these names littered through there. Bailey Herforth from LSU, just one goal allowed in 500 minutes of play. There are some strong performers on the USLW Team of the Month. Yeah, it is really impressive, and I think it speaks a lot to the leadership that you can clearly watch from Tiana Harris to be named the captain of that as a center back and also to have as many goals tapped to her name is really impressive so I think that speaks a lot to the season that she is having which to be honest is a very unique and special season so far uh, she's been extremely impressive she has been a leader going forward she's been a leader in the back she's been a leader for you can tell the, the mentality of the team so you know, she's been a really impressive player to watch this season. You've talked about Golden Boot, at least for a team Golden Boot, the current 
leader in that category individually, Bailey DeSmith from Christos FC, also on the May Team of the Month. As Jazuski up off and able to walk off under her own power. Twin Cities Orthopedics, the official partner of Minnesota Aurora, lending an assist there to help Christina Jazuski. Yeah, there has been some impressive, to go back to what you were mentioning before, there has been some impressive players who have put up a number of goals. I think mostly coming from the West Coast, I think there's a player with 10, I think there's one with 13, if I'm not um, miscorrect, if I'm not incorrect about that, but I don't know if they were on the um, the star team, but I've seen a lot of a lot of goals from some players, so it's been very impressive. Well, speaking of the West Coast, San Francisco Glens coming into this evening leading the league in total goals scored with 32. Now, Aurora still nipping on their heels with 30. They have played, I believe, two or three more games than Minnesota Aurora has so far this season. So just don't don't forget that <laughs> very important piece of information. San Francisco 8-0-0. -oh as we resume this match off a drop ball and back underway. For those of you just joining us, a shift of venue due to the poor air quality here in the state of Minnesota. We have moved indoors to the St. Croix Valley Indoor Recreational Facility. And it is all Minnesota right now through the first half hour of play. Yeah, both teams were definitely disappointed, I know, to have to move the game indoors, not be able to play in that atmosphere at TCO. That is a, for Green Bay specifically, that's also a place that they like to play. That's where they got their point off Minnesota, the only team to do that so far. So I know that they were really gunning for that going into this game, but I think everybody is just happy that there's a game being had right now. And that's a real testament to the flexibility and determination of both these staffs and these teams as the Wickers will clear that away from dangerous territory. To be able to, on a couple hours notice, shift everything to a venue that's not exactly just next door. That's right, yeah. It was a, a lot of communications. I know a lot of hard decisions being made by everybody, by both staffs, by both teams. Uh, but I know everybody's happy to be here and, and just to have some game going. And it is important to get these games played because the season is so short. And a lot of players only have so much time available away from college seasons, away from work, away from just life in general to be able to step away and play even an away game. So to be able to make the adjustments needed to be able to play this game is, yeah, it speaks a lot to to what the club and the league is trying to do for these players. Stone will pick up the pieces and guide it back to Kafusi. Plenty of space to move forward here. And Green Bay Glory just dropping so far back almost within a 10-yard area their whole defensive line is. Defender whiffed on the clearance. Adler's shot blocked away. Great strike, though, by Adler. Good block by Green Bay Glory, but that was a really good strike. Rachel Janes for Green Bay. Calm under the pressure, able to clear the lines. And that is where Tiana Harris and the back three for Minnesota will take possession. Tiana Harris almost feels like a reset button for Minnesota Aurora. As soon as she gets the ball, it was almost like everybody took a deep breath and calmed it back down, connected a pass again. Now they're back here to let's play around the back until we're ready to go forward again. And I'm sure we will see that happen in just a few, a few minutes here where they break forward. But she's really, she's really the leader of the tempo of this game so far. Langdock will play that ball forward and intercepted by Green Bay. Alyssa Miracle has been active defensively for Green Bay Glory. Harris flicks that back ahead. Now 
Harris will guide that back to Amanda Poorball, and Minnesota will reset things. Once again, Green Bay sort of dropping off, letting Minnesota Aurora play around the back, not trying to win it up there. They're really holding their line, being pretty disciplined, waiting for a ball that goes forward, and then trying to compact around that. They are holding a pretty high back line, so Minnesota is able to try to expose them over the top. You've seen a number of balls that are trying to go over the top there, but they're doing a really good job of trying to keep the play super compact. Advantage played here. Adler ahead. Hansen shot and stopped by Larissa Likes, her third save of the match. Peppering the Green Bay keeper early as Minnesota. Great turn there by Mariah Wynn. Hannah Adler just getting forward, looking. That was a no-look pass across the top of the 18 there to Maya Hansen. Good job by Maya to get a shot off. She was pretty off balance. There was almost like maybe connect one more pass with Kenzie Langdock if you can. But a good job to get a shot off no matter what. Green Bay gives it up off the throw, and they recover in the midfield. Back to Morrissey. And here's a really good example of the difference between Minnesota Aurora's defense high up the field and Green Bay. As, Minis as Green Bay was playing around the back there, you actually heard Tiana Harris saying, get up, get up, get up, pushing her team forward to press higher up the field. Whereas we saw just a few minutes ago, Green Bay is actually dropping back. They're pulling back, 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 letting Minnesota Aurora play, play across the back. So very different strategies there in how teams want to defend. Teams fighting for it. Challenge applied and unsuccessful for Green Bay. Here's Wynn with it. Adler dancing through defenders. Her shot blocked away. A chance now for Green Bay to make their first change of this match and an important one for Green Bay. It's Skyler Prentice, their leading goal scorer. Three goals this season. Led the team with five goals a season ago. And she will be coming in up top as the high player. It'll be interesting to see if they're looking for her to bring more of a defensive presence higher up the field, be more of a, a counterattack release. It's going to be really interesting to see how they utilize her, knowing that she is a player who can score goals, who wants to score goals, and that Green Bay does lean on for those goals. Prentice, the Bemidji State product of the Division II level, over 1,300 minutes played in her final season. Ostrom whiffed on it. Now an opportunity here for Green Bay. Stone comes up with it. Now Langdock trying to weave through. It's Stone. Out off of Morgan Stone. Green Bay Glory with the throw in. A little choppy play there from both teams. I don't think either team was as clean as they wanted to be um, in on either side, defensively or attacking. They're kind of getting broken up just by mistakes from everybody. I think the last couple of minutes going into every halftime are moments that typically die a little bit where it's like a little it, the play just starts to drop a little bit um, so we're definitely seeing that here and I think going into half both teams are going to want to clean it up again just bringing some new energy because the energy has has also dropped a little bit around the 25 minute mark you said you felt like there was a shift in momentum swinging more toward green bay have you seen that change is it about the same 
I would just, I, th I do think that Green Bay is getting their footing a little bit. There has not been as many opportunities for Minnesota Aurora going forward, so I, they, they have made adjustments defensively to minimize those opportunities. Having said that, I do think Minnesota Aurora is showing a little bit of fatigue or just fatigue men mentally in terms of, okay, let's keep the ball, let's keep moving it forward, let's all go together as a team, um, and it's been a little bit less technically sound. So, yes, I do think so, but I'm not sure if that's due to better play by Green Bay or just slower, not as clean play by Minnesota Aurora. Roughly five minutes away from the halftime whistle from our official here inside the St. Croix Valley Recreation Center. A first half brace for Cat Rapp. Hannah Adler also with a strike. That has been the difference so far. One of the other things that I do think is pretty interesting, and we mentioned going into the last five minutes of half, is usually where you know, players start to get a little tired. They haven't had a break. Minnesota Aurora plays at such high speed usually. Um, and they have been asking a lot of their back three to play the ball, to keep moving, to be a lot of the tempo setters, as we've mentioned throughout the game. I, that actually puts a lot more effort on them as well, a lot more miles than I think what a center back is usually used to. Uh, so I do think that that is lending a little bit into the heaviness of the legs of Kelsey Kafusi, Abby Ostrom. Tiana Harris, I haven't seen it so much, but she is right now playing that true center back, which comes with less running than a typical outside back. So... Uh, so I think going halftime will be well received by the two, Abby Ostrom and Kelsey Kafusi. Harris will send that one forward. It was a good run by Cat, a good look, trying to get over the top again. Green Bay holding a pretty high line, which allowed Cat to try to get in behind it. It wasn't quite far enough, but, but a really good run by her. Intercepted by Adler in the midfield. Hanson just muscled off the ball there. Green Bay trying to turn on it. Who else but Tiana Harris there to clean up the mess? And it's back to Harris. I do think this is wise by Aurora. Try to kill the half here. Close it off without making too many more mistakes. Mistake right there, though, that you know almost resulted in, I think, what was a shot. A little ambitious there, but you see Green Bay is trying what they can to get forward and create something off of Minnesota Aurora's mistakes. That was Rachel Janes with the shot attempt. She read that well, able to step up. She definitely did. Intercepted again. Green Bay on it. Now Prentice has it. Slicing through and flicked on ahead. Just running out of room for Green Bay. They were looking for Elizabeth Banky, the UW lacrosse product. But that was exactly the same that you said before. She did a good job of stepping up there, reading the play, stepping in in front of Hannah Adler to win the ball and just get forward again. So Green Bay is doing a great job of being patient, waiting for it, and then reading when the pass is going to go and just stepping right in front of it. Now work it around to Wickers, now left in an empty space for Kafusi. Green Bay back on it now. A whistle comes in and a foul away from the ball.
Played back in and headed away by Kafusi. Pressure still alive for Green Bay. A corner kick one from Green Bay Glory, their first of this match. Cat Rap having to do a lot of work there to come back and try to block that shot. It kind of landed at the foot for Green Bay, right on top of the box, a really dangerous area, and she was definitely going for a shot. Cat Rap did a lot of hard work there to get back and, and deny that. In swinging ball comes in and headed away. Cross back in, poor ball out with the punch, still live in front. Harris smart to clear it away. Shot from distance wide of goal, and that will be an Amanda poor ball goal kick. Take a look at the rules of the game presented by Lark and Hoffman. Two minutes of stoppage time here at the end of the half. Danny, what is the importance of stoppage time? Oh, man. It, stoppage time is a point of contention right now, I would say, after the last World Cup where FIFA had made it a point to play every minute of those games. You saw oftentimes like 10 minutes even at half of of stoppage time so they can really impact a game for sure you can see in these last couple of minutes here i mean minnesota Aurora, that was probably their most dangerous opportunity for green bay that they've had there and uh just bouncing around and yeah i mean that opportunity came because we're in stoppage time here so Green Bay will have the throw toward the waning moments of this first half. It was a bright start for Minnesota. Two goals within the first three minutes. Glory have started to find their footing here in the final minutes of this first half. And this throw will be taken in somewhat decent position for Green Bay on that far side. This is something about Minnesota Aurora that we have talked about all season. They are a team that comes out firing, and then it slowly comes down. It slowly starts to slow down. The pace of it starts to change a little bit. The whistle sounds from our official. We've reached halftime here at the St. Croix Valley Recreation Center. Minnesota, three quick goals, an onslaught early since then. Both teams have settled in. We will head to break here on Fox 9 Plus. Aurora fans, you're watching the Fox 9 Plus Halftime Report. Well, thanks so much for joining us for this Minnesota Aurora halftime update on Fox 9 Plus. I'm Tim Blotz. By now, you know that poor air quality forced tonight's match indoors without fans. That decision was made just a few hours before game time tonight. Our Pierre Nugent is live at the match. And Pierre, this has really kind of been a crazy afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, Tim, it's kind of been a whirlwind day. When we woke up today, we thought we were going to be seeing a match being played at TCO Stadium between Minnesota Aurora and the Green Bay Glory. But as you know, that was not the case as the day progressed, as officials decided to move the match indoors to prevent the players from having to play in that type of atmosphere. The fires in Western Canada, of course, blowing a lot of that smoke and terrible air quality here into Minnesota. But we are at the half here between Minnesota and Green Bay, and Minnesota is enjoying a 3-0 halftime edge and the goals came early as the 70 in 75 seconds into the match I should say Hannah Adler gets Minnesota on the board she has just been on an absolute tear as of late and then it was followed up by two goals from Cat Rap, and that's currently where we stand at three to nothing now going back to the match itself earlier today we actually spoke with team officials and they told us that they did look into trying to postpone or possibly even reschedule the match but looking at the USLW schedule with how compact and tight things are it just wasn't feasible for this match to be rescheduled for a later date and that is why they are playing this match tonight and they are playing it indoors and unfortunately for Aurora fans you will not be able to see this team playing in person tonight but hopefully the air quality will be much better when the team returns to TCO Stadium again at the half 
We stand at 3-0 in favor of Minnesota. A terrific performance from the team thus far. This team looking to remain undefeated on the season. They currently stand at 6-0. Looking to move to 7-0 on the season. And we'll have much more on this game coming up tonight at 9 o'clock over on Fox 9. Yeah, kudos. Reporting here from an undisclosed location, I should say. <laughs> uh, Tim, we'll send it back to you. All right. Kudos to the entire organization to make this game happen tonight, despite everything that's been going on. And if you stepped outside, you know why they had to move the Aurora game inside. Meteorologist Jennifer McDermott joins us now with a look at your forecast, including the smoke that's just pouring in from Canada. Jennifer? It was another hazy smoky afternoon for us the air quality alert still in place from now until friday morning and that includes everyone across the state of minnesota everyone across wisconsin and that's due to the wildfires that are up towards our north and canada the winds are coming in from the north northeast allowing us to pull in that dense heavy smoke visibilities all day long have been around three miles or less so certainly a not the best day to be outside today and Thursday right now is looking to be very similar to what we had today. <clears throat> Overnight 63 for a low temperature widespread smoke by tomorrow afternoon 84 staying with the widespread smoke. So if the kids have outdoor camps or if you work outdoors, you'll want to limit your time outside. Find a way to get into some air conditioning and clear out that air that you'll be breathing. Also, the young, the old, expecting mothers, and also those of you with respiratory illnesses or concerns, not the best day to be out and about for your Thursday. By tomorrow evening, 67 for temperature by around 10 o'clock in a hazy sky. We do have a slight chance of rain trying to find its way into our forecast, and with it, we're going to try and push the smoke out as well. The smoke won't be lingering for more than just the next day or two, so that's good news at least. Overnight, mostly clear sky, but heavy smoke. And then for your Friday, we'll begin to see plenty of sunshine. Friday right now is looking to stay on the dry side, but Saturday is looking like it's going to be one of our better bets for that chance of rain. Here's the deal though, it's not going to be widespread. We desperately need some widespread rain, but at the moment it's looking like spotty showers at, at best. Here's your seven day forecast, 84 for Thursday, Friday 86, Saturday 87, Sunday spotty showers with a daytime high of 86 degrees. All right, thanks much. Back to the Aurora now for a moment because fresh off a 2022 season where she was the second leading scorer on the team, Morgan Stone is spending her summers now in Minnesota while playing college soccer at Boise State. Our Ahmad Hicks caught up with her on what it's like to play for the Aurora. Here's Stone all alone. Stone sends the shot forward. Are you serious? They say when things are good. I just absolutely fell in love with the atmosphere here. You usually can't get enough. The fans, the community, everything was so fun um, to be a part of. Which is exactly why holding midfielder Morgan Stone is back for seconds. Also, it was just so competitive, so we get better through the summer. A full-time student athlete at Boise State and a summer soccer player with Minnesota Aurora FC. Stone says the extra summer grind is all part of her plan. My parents have some papers from when I was in like third grade of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it was always pro soccer. And last summer was her glimpse of what that life may soon be like. All right, USLW <laughs> League in the 60th minute, Morgan Stone, powerful strike from deep. My phone was blowing up. I've never been so popular. I was like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. But it was all very rewarding. With the support from friends and family back home. Oh! to the Mall of America here in Minnesota, Stone has been able to see the impact soccer players like her are having on the next generation of stars. I think it makes it all worth it for me um, because I can see the light in their eyes when they look at me and when they talk to me that I saw when I was growing up and I just want them to know that it is possible. And her advice to the next wave of stars is to dream big and have fun because look where it's gotten her thus far anything is possible at that age you can do anything you want and it's a lot harder to say it than to do it but if you put your mind to it you really can do it and I didn't I don't know if I fully believed I could do it but here I am in this amazing place in Egan I'm Ahmad Hicks 
Fox 9 Sports. All right, Ahmad. Well, we're in the middle of the Aurora halftime. We're back with more in just a moment. Aurora fans, you're watching the Fox 9 Plus Halftime Report. Well, despite the hazy skies, it's a decent night for baseball anyhow. The Fox 9 Town Ball Tour is in New Market tonight, so let's check in with our own Ian Leonard. who has more on everything that's happening tonight. Ian? Hi, everybody. Fox 9 Chief Meteorologist Ian Leonard live on stop number two of the Fox 9 Town Ball Tour. We find ourselves, and as you look at the hill, in Newmarket. What an incredible night for baseball. What an incredible night for soccer. Biggest problem is the haze in the air quality alert. You know, tonight we had a uh, Ian Leonard look-alike contest. So people came dressed in all sorts of gear. And, of course, I always wear the pants. So let's talk to who we've got here. Your name is? Cody. And your name is? Cal. And your name is? Heather. So this is like the sons and the moms kind of deal. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, I particularly love the 70s gear. I love your pants. And this whole thing here is fantastic. I have never personally worn a tutu, but if I were, does it come off? Yeah. Oh, I'm wearing that tutu later. We're going to get this going. So what made you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Heather said to do it. Mom said to do it. This is it. It's Fox 9 Town Ball Tour, and it is the Ian Leonard Lookalike Contest. Cal and Heather and Cody. Close enough. Yeah, we got all that sort of stuff. We're going to send things back to you, Aurora fans. Have yourselves a great night. Oh, awesome, Ian. Thanks. A lot of fun out there tonight. Okay, the Vikings, they wrap up the mandatory mini camp over at TCO Performance Center. The team kind of stepping into the next phase now with training camp looming in just more than a month. Our Don Mitchell has the story. 
Vikings mini camp wrapping up here at TCO today, but we were also talking to quarterback Kirk Cousins about quarterback. It is a new Netflix docu series coming out soon. I think it comes out in July. Um, they followed us through last season and um, captured a lot of content. We're mic'd up for every game. Football comes naturally to Kirk, but having a film crew follow your every move can be daunting. He said, though it was handled incredibly well, it was subtle and never intrusive. Well, I was a little nervous, right? I mean, cameras and mics following you year round, you know, uh, the whole season, you know, what does that look like? And, and uh, you're always very aware of never being an individual. You, know, you want to be about team, be one of the guys, and would this at all make me an individual? And if so, I, don't, I can't do that. And as for the offense, Cousins is happy with the progress made so far, especially in light of losing longstanding teammates like Dalvin Cook and Adam Thielen. Even losing Adam, you look out at the receivers and you feel like you're throwing to guys you know, the tight ends. Um, so there's, there's some consistency there too, and it'll always be that way, but uh, um, I think we've got a pretty pretty experienced group on offense, which is uh, a real positive. But just to just, uh, have the dynamic that we have, you know, and, and the special, um, you know, athletes that we have on this side of the ball is, is, is incredible. You know, I mean, you don't get it every, every team you're at and, and every place you go. So it's, uh, it's going to be a blast when it comes to fall. And when it comes to July and that Netflix debut, he realizes it will have a bigger impact than football. As I watched, you know, a couple edits, I realized this, there's going to be a few things better to show my two boys in about 10, 15 years to say this is what dad did. You know, you were too young to really remember it, but this was life. This is what it looked like. I mean, it's going to be pretty powerful. I mean, my grandkids. So it is about football, but Kirk knows it is also more than football. Those will be family memories for a lifetime. At TCO Performance Center, Don Mitchell, Fox 9 Sports. Yeah, for sure, Don. All right, thanks for joining us for this special halftime report of the Aurora soccer game versus Green Bay Glory. We've got more coming up at 9 tonight with Randy and BC. I'll see you at 10. Aurora fans, you're watching the Fox 9 Plus Halftime Report.
the second half now underway as we take a look at a couple quick highlights from that first half. Danny, your impressions? I mean, an outstanding first start from Minnesota Aurora, obviously getting right at the goal, scoring three quick goals, and then kind of settling into the game. It slowed down a little bit, but Minnesota Aurora definitely came out on top. Three goals straight away is pretty impressive for anybody. Help Green Bay without a shot on goal as well through the first 45 minutes. Aurora have held four of their last five opponents to two or fewer. A nice move from Cat Rap. And here's Wynn near side. Adler cutting in. Minnesota Aurora bringing the energy straight away, trying to get forward, trying to be creative again. You can see the energy's picked back up a little bit, which is exactly what we expect. I'm sure at halftime both coaches talked to their team about the momentum dying a little bit and having to ramp that back up to get the teams going again, get an attack going again, um, bring some new energy. So we're seeing that right off the bat here. Three changes for Minnesota to open the second 45. Sophie French, Rami Rapp, and Kylie Olsen, all three on the pitch for the first time this evening. And with those changes, says a good ball here over the top. Rapp all alone. Rapp in, looking, Olsen, and it trickles through. This goal came from a wonderfully delivered ball over the top, perfectly to Cat Rap's foot. Long ball here, Cat taking a perfect touch inside, getting to goal across a, along the ground. I mean, just that was a perfect goal, something that I think Coach Lukic will want to see time and time again from her team. I would say that is a quintessential Minnesota Aurora goal. That's as perfect as you could get. Uh, but I, I love to see that it ends at the foot of Kylie Olsen, her first minute in this game, and she gets a goal. At the restart, a 4-0 lead. Kylie Olsen, her first of the season, and Aurora back on it. There's French now providing the width. French, that ball slips through. It's still alive. Here's Win on the doorstep, and it goes wide. Minnesota will have a corner. It's funny how you start to pick up the patterns of teams as you watch them. <laughs> and Minnesota Aurora's pattern is the first 10 to 15 minutes of every game, we are going to score, and we're going to score a lot. It's so true. As Minnesota shorts the corner. Ostrom, that shot blocked. And with that early onslaught, it almost demoralizes teams because when you're down three, four goals before you really have a chance to get settled in, now you're really pressing. And in a sport like soccer, that's nearly an insurmountable deficit. It is. That makes it really hard. Anything over two, I mean, it just becomes a super steep hill to climb and try to dig your way out of especially against a team that has the amount of energy that Minnesota Aurora does. It's very unique, and they, they have that kind of energy for so long. They, are, they have very high stamina. So that's something that's really impressive and makes it hard if you're trying to come back because you have to put that much more effort into it when you are trying to climb your way out of a deficit. In saying that, coming out of halftime, is always a time to regroup as a team. So for Green Bay, I'm sure at halftime they went back and talked about, here's how we can improve. Here's the things we want to continue to keep doing. We made it challenging for Minnesota Aurora to connect, especially going into the end of that first half. And then to come out and give up a really early goal again just is very deflating. Um, so for Minnesota Aurora, I mean, a great job to capitalize on that disappointing for Green Bay for sure whistle sounds from Ryan Farrell our man in charge this evening a handball as that ball caromed up much like we saw in half number one Minnesota on the front foot early here in half number two
A whistle and a foul given. Free kick from right on that far corner of the box. That was a great run from Carolina Gomez, able to win that free kick. Really lucky here that the, the ref didn't put that inside the penalty box. It was just on the corner. I think a good call. It wasn't really a goal-scoring opportunity, so I think that was a really good job by the ref to pull it outside. But, um, yeah, difficult and challenging spot for Minnesota Aurora here. Our rules of the game presented by Larkin Hoffman. Right there on that corner of the 18 for Carolina Gomez. She struck twice this year. Goals against Chicago City, SC, and Rochester. Looks like the ref was asking her to pull it outside of the line. Because if it's on the line, technically that would make it a PK. So, Angling in. Poor ball. Able to punch it away. Great save there by poor ball. Reading it. Out swinging ball, which is really difficult. She just continued to push it on, essentially, out of the field. But really good save. Taylor Kane, I apologize about that. Didn't realize. Di okay, it was Poirot. Corner comes in and headed away by Rapp. Gomez skies this one to the far side of the box. That is where Jazuski sends a shot, which is gloved by Amanda Poirot. After a really an inactive First 45 minutes for Amanda Poorball now has come up big with back-to-back -back saves here early in the second half. That is the job of a goalie. I myself would never want to be a goalie for that <laughs> exact reason. They are expected to basically be a part of the game from afar for you know 90% of the game, be communicating, be organizing, be a part of it, stay in tune, and then all of a sudden make a huge you know diving save, sometimes back-to-back -back like that. Olsen's cross cut out by the defender. That will be tracked down by Langdock. Whipped in. Headed back toward goal, and diving on it is Larissa Likes, the high school sophomore, has conceded four goals. But when you're a sophomore in high school going up against the caliber of players that Minnesota have trotted out on the pitch tonight, you have... Really no choice but to be impressed by her performance so far. Oh, yeah, for sure. No matter what, especially when you're playing the quality of Minnesota Aurora, any goalkeeper is going to be tested. They're going to get opportunities. And as a goalie, that's almost a game that you want to play in because you're getting more opportunities to be seen than you are when it's a 0-0 and there's you know not that many shots. Or if you're in Amanda Porba's position where you don't have to make that many saves. Um, so, you know, for her to be a sophomore getting exposed to this, that's, that's just incredible. Such good exposure for her. Langdock plays that through the middle. French on it now. An opportunity building for Minnesota. That is a strong defensive job on the outside by Alyssa Miracle. Just muscled Sophie French off the ball, and that will be... A likes goal kick. And Sophie French is a player, we have talked about it a, a lot this season. She is a workhorse. She is somebody who is always consistent with the amount of work she is putting in uh, defensively and attacking. I don't think we have seen as much from her as we would like to uh, with her foot on the ball and really getting at players, but it has been really impressive to see just the pure amount of work that she has put in, and it has made it easier for her teammates when she's defending as she does. French, the former Portland pilot, also spent time collegiately at Cal State Fullerton and Idaho. Stone will head that away off the Green Bay throw. Morgan Stone is another player that I would I would say has grown a ton over her time from last season to this season um, in playing in Coach Lukic's style. She has really formed a, a role for herself, a space for herself, and carved it out as like she's going to be that defensive midfielder who can jumpstart the attack and also be really dangerous, score from far away, um, but also defensively going to be like a powerhouse and win the ball in the air. So she has been a really fun player for me to see develop over the last two years. 
That ball intercepted at the midfield stripe, taken away by Kircher, and given right back away by Green Bay. They play win into space. Promising build up here for Minnesota. Miscommunication between French and Wynn. That will be cleared out there by Alyssa Miracle. Just a little bit slow there from Wynn. She took a few too many touches. I think Sophie French wanted the ball a little bit earlier. She had made the run across, sort of the underlapping run to get wide. Uh, Mariah Wynn took a few more touches than I think that run allowed. Ball played back to Amanda Poorball, and Minnesota will try to reset things. Good ball ahead. Adler, nice first touch, was looking for Cat Rapp, and just a little too strong. That ball actually came from Amanda Poorball, getting it high up the field. So almost this field is allowing Amanda Poorball off the punt or even a kick to, to be a part of the attack. It did deflect off a Green Bay player, meaning corner for Minnesota. They're sixth. To that far post to French. Now Olsen tried it off the volley. Langdock's shot was blocked away. Minnesota trying to quickly recover here. That was one of the first longer corners we've seen from Minnesota Aurora. They tried it. I do think they had a good opportunity that came from it. But you saw Green Bay is definitely still looking to counterattack quickly. They actually had three players against three Minnesota Aurora defenders there. So um, Green Bay has not shifted their mentality away from let's get forward when we can. Miracle will play it forward to Gomez. Now Gomez into an empty area, had no teammates, and that is where Mackenzie Langdock picks it up. Over to Ostrom now. Mackenzie Langdock back in the back line again. She moved from right outside mid back to right outside back, dropping back into that three center back position. That ball flicked on ahead. No one on the receiving end of it. Green Bay set to make three changes. Stone battling for it, and a whistle sounds. Free kick given to Minnesota. There's Morgan Stone again, really forcing the issue. Or excuse me, free kick given to Green Bay. Ball hanging in, almost fell to Skylar Prentice, and that is where McKenzie Langdock will clear it away. Morgan Stone being the one to win that header there, always strong in the air. Anna Boyd will sub on, as will Myla Stewart and Maria Sorensen. Three changes for Green Bay and their second-year coach, Linda Vance, the former Milwaukee Panther player. A couple Milwaukee alums roaming the sidelines tonight for both these teams. Nicole Lukic, a former four-time Horizon League champion at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Ostrom able to cut that out. And it does deflect off of Ostrom. Green Bay will have the throw. Yes, 
It took a little deeper into the first half before we started to see Green Bay find its footing. But, Denny, we're starting to see them get more into their game here. Just about 15 minutes elapsed into the second half. They definitely are. You can see that they're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable individually on the ball. They're wanting the ball at their feet. They're trying to make runs in behind. They're getting a little bit more confident in pressing against when Minnesota Aurora has the ball, knowing they can win it, and then turning it forward just like this. I will say that is forcing fr some mistakes from Minnesota Aurora. As poor ball steps in front and gloves that down. Minnesota will counter with three changes of their own at the next available opportunity. Touched on it a bit ago about poor ball not having much work to do in that first half and now being more active in the second half. When you're a little idle like that for almost 45 minutes, that has to be tough to then be immediately thrown into the fire like she has been to start this second half. Yeah, that, that really is the specialty of a goalkeeper is mentality. I think that's what makes a goalkeeper great versus just good is being able to turn it on and off to find your moments of rest um, but to still stay involved in the game that is a it's a real challenge especially when it's kind of you know slower on your end of the field so I wouldn't again I wouldn't want to do it but goalkeepers are are wonderful for that Del Moro, Mullaney, and Zbilich will sub on for Minnesota. You see Brenlin Mullaney there. One assist to her credit on the season. And Minnesota going back to the slow the tempo down using our back line. Let's pass around back there, wait for things to develop a little further up the field, and then try to go quickly at that. I do think Green Bay is doing a really good job of reading that and knowing, okay, there we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Let's let this develop and then read whatever pass comes from here and try to step in at that moment. That ball intercepted by Maya Alberts. Gomez will swing it out wide, able to find Stewart. Now back into the middle. Here's Banky. Prentice getting tangled up there with Zbilich, and Zbilich comes out of a crowd with it. A lot of patience here from Minnesota Aurora. The movement has sort of slowed further up the field, which is fine. Hangs that ball ahead, was looking for Zbilich. Just behind her, here's Del Moral. Zbilich has support here. And scooped up by Likes. That's Sophie French crashing in on her. And the young sophomore calm under that pressure. Yeah, Sophie French was a step behind there, I think trying to get in in behind off that cross. The cross came a little early, so maybe there was just a little bit of timing difference there. But I would say this half definitely feels different in terms of Green Bay's willingness to go after first and second balls, win the bouncing balls. Uh, try to press a little bit more defensively and step a little bit higher. Uh, they definitely are, are making a difference in this second half. I think it goes to show how important the strong starts are for Minnesota because if you take away those two early quick goals in that first half, this is a very different ball game in the second half, not just from the scoreline, but like you said, about the way Green Bay has adjusted and it is playing. But a 4-0 deficit is much different. Yeah, you are, you are very right. If I were 
coaching against Minnesota Aurora, I would be telling our team. As Likes comes off her line, French reels that one in. Yeah, I'd be telling our team, you know, we need to get through the first 15 minutes of each half. And if we can get through that, if we can wear them down, if we can just weather the storm, then we're going to be all right. And that's that's something that I think will become a challenge going into playoffs against teams that, that have the same amount of energy coming straight from the whistle. Played back to Langdock, and now here's Stone with it. And three white shirts surrounding her. Green Bay has done a better job in this half of really swarming to the ball anytime an Aurora player has it. Yeah, they definitely are first to the ball here. I didn't say that. They are they're stepping in front of Minnesota Aurora's players. Whereas be, in the first half, Minnesota Aurora actually was often holding off their defense, you know, the defender behind them, keeping the ball away from them. And this time, Green Bay is just stepping right in front, winning the ball. French battles through that challenge. Now back heel back to her, and ball intercepted. He's looking for Prentice. She gets tangled up with Ostrom, and Ostrom's still down. Difficult challenge there. I think maybe they hit hips. I'm not sure if they... I'm not sure what else happened there, but they definitely collided. It looked like a pretty painful collision. Ostrom still down in a heap. Which brings this match to a screeching halt. Now Ostrom back to her feet. Good to see that. Twin Cities Orthopedics, the official partner of Minnesota Aurora. Play resumes off the Green Bay throw in. Alberts will toss this in for Green Bay glory. Alberts, the Madison, Wisconsin native, plays for St. John's Red Storm of the Big East. As that ball goes skittering past the end line, it'll be a poor ball goal kick. You said it a minute ago, playoffs. That's the word on everybody's mind as we approach the back half of everyone's schedules. Right now, the wild card from the Central Conference, based on points per match, it's sort of a toss-up between Racing Louisville and Chicago City SC. Indy 11, Minnesota Aurora, and Flint City AFC would be the three auto bids from the respective divisions in the Central Conference. Still a lot to battle for, though, and fight for on the back half of the schedule for Green Bay as they try to work themselves back into playoff contention. Yeah, this is where every point becomes really, really important. Even a tie, a draw at this time would be a huge point for Green Bay. Even Chicago City uh, trying to get a tie, you know, a draw at, at later in the season against Minnesota Aurora, it just becomes hugely important because they're going to be trying to inch any points from any spot that they can and when you're looking at the standings and the potential points that are left out for every team at the end of the season those become increasingly important defender fell down now Spielich flanked there by Olsen that shot blocked Langdock will chase it down however sends the shot forward just wide of goal that French bearing down on that near post. Instead, it's a goal kick. Really dangerous ball there by Mackenzie Langdock, putting it on the back the back post above the keeper's hands. So if Sophie French can get on the end of it, it's almost an open goal there. That really felt like it developed almost out of nothing. We had reached sort of a, a lull pace in this second half. And then there you see it again, the quick strike potential for Minnesota. 
Minnesota is so good at finding those moments coming from really obscure spots of the field that that was not a dangerous area for a cross by Mackenzie Langdock, but a perfectly placed ball can really turn something in from that was nothing into something. So, um, you know, that is the strength of Minnesota Aurora is just creating from a bunch of different spots on the field. Great ball ahead. Mullaney played through. This really could be something here for Aurora. Low cross back to the top. Olsen had her shot blocked again. That will win a corner for Minnesota. I almost thought Del Morrill Mur Del Morrill wanted the ball just as a little set so she could shoot it there. The ball came a little bit faster than I think what she wanted, um, but she did well to continue to keep the ball in the attacking third, pass it back, and, and get a shot off, actually. Stone hangs that one high. A little too much on that cross. French guides it back to Kafusi. Aurora recycled that ball back over to Stone. Stone with some space to move now. And wins another corner for Minnesota. Corner starting to pile up for Aurora. Eight now in this match. Just about on their season average of 8.8. .8. And I know that this is a, a spot that Coach Lukic is wanting to see more goals from. So they're getting to the point where I'm sure she's saying, let's, let's, <laughs> let's get a goal here. Outswinging ball from Stone. Ostrom surveys her options. That ball goes corkscrewing through. Just caught the head of French. Back to Olsen now. Olsen whips that ball in. Headed away by Prentice. Here's a little bit more of the Minnesota flair, the more momentum shifting back into their possession, wanting the ball at their feet, passing, moving, getting it again, crisscrossing runs. This is a little bit more along what we would expect to see from Minnesota Aurora. Langdock with it now. Kafusi plays it forward, finds French. Great ball by Kafusi to break that midfield line, get it into Sophie French's feet. French, good ball to hold, good job to hold the ball there. Aurora pressing high again, trying to win that ball back, and they do. French, good first touch to settle it. Rapp's shot was blocked. Ostrom steps up with the interception. Ostrom goes down inside the box, and the official points to the spot. A penalty upcoming, one on a fantastic run by Abby Ostrom. Great job there to draw the defender out. She kind of ran into a, a wall there of defenders and then decided, you know what, let's just keep going. Let's try to draw out as many players as we can. Drew two players, obviously drew the foul. Really impressive footwork by her. And a good job to mentally say, let's go. Aurora two for two on penalties this season, both converted Last home match by Hannah Adler. Here's French. 
And French soundly beats the keeper for goal number five of the match, her second of the season. Great PK there with confidence. She actually sent the goalie the wrong direction there, twisted her hips. You can see as she steps up here, it looks like she's going to the near post, and then she just opens, leaves her hips open, goes back to that far post. Really impressive and difficult shot to take, sending the keeper in a different direction every time. Aurora will make a change in net for the final 15 minutes. Taylor Kane, the sophomore out of Santa Barbara, California, will come in. Now we have Taylor Kane on, on the field here. For Green Bay, they also make a change. Lucy Kwidzinski, the UW lacrosse product, will come on. Although not your traditional home match with the circumstances shifting it indoors. Minnesota 10-1-1 one, one all-time. They've won five of their last six matches home. We talked about this last time we were on the air. Outscoring opponents 42-8 to eight at home coming into this. That has now grown even more, 47-8. to eight. And don't look now, Aurora back on it. French wants to cross. That falls through. Headed over the bar. That was pretty fantastic play. Mullaney, what a good job to cut the ball back off the volley into the middle of the goal. A little nod down. You can see she does such a good job to pull that back across. A little nod down there instead of up and over the goal. I think that's a goal every time. The goalie was pulled way out of position. Just fantastic play by Minnesota Aurora. Kane forced to come out to alleviate the pressure. Now here's Stone. And Green Bay has a, holding a little bit of a higher line this half, putting pressure up in Minnesota Aurora's defensive half there, which is different than what they were doing in the first half. Um, maybe trying to nick one off a little bit higher up the field and, and get a goal, a counterattack goal. Had to make some changes, and I think that was an appropriate change to make. A foot race here between Mullaney and the defender. Mullaney wins it, and a good job there by Michaela Kircher to fight it off. Zabilic, though. Again, Minnesota Stonewall, this time by Alberts. That's just a great defensive play in the middle there by Morgan Stone. I was just going to say the same. Really an important touch by her. She's in the right spot, trying to play around her. She had, she knew a player was coming in behind her. She gets a little bit of a toe, just enough to disrupt the flow of Green Bay trying to go forward, trying to get a counterattack going. So super important positioning by Morgan Stone there. Just a wonderful defensive play. Flip back on by Langdock. That ran down by Rami Rapp. Has support from Olsen. Cleared away by the center back, and this is where Green Bay will try to build something. Del Morrill has other ideas, though. Intercepted by Spielich. And that ball goes sailing wide. She went for it. I think she was going for the touch up and then a volley, although it was a little out from her feet. I appreciate the effort. A couple of dangerous passes there, though, from Green Bay. Lucky that they don't concede another. Yeah, they are definitely trying to play out of the back a little bit more. I think they're trying to do some things different from what they were doing in the first half, which was a little bit of, you know, they were, ha they were struggling trying to find a pass, so they're trying to play out of the back, which I appreciate it, just is hard. Olsen runs that down. It's loose before Likes dives on it. She'll try to jumpstart this attack with the rollout.
The ball's picked up a little bit more of a bounce, I would say, in the last couple of minutes here, too. I know that's something both of these teams want to see. They're both coached with keep the ball on the ground, let's play to feet, let's play clean. So the ball, when it gets bouncing a little bit, is definitely more to mistakes happening rather than how both teams want to be playing. Good job by Green Bay, able to step up. Player goes down, though. That's Alberts. Minnesota trying to capitalize. Aurora moving in packs here, have options, and defender cuts that out. Great defensive play there by, uh, by Green Bay. Just wonderful. She's backtracking, has a player crisscrossing against her, still able to make the play, stop the ball, get up, and actually um, can. can uh, connect a pass so really wonderful by Green Bay French has wrap on the overlap that crossed back in and leaks through well, I think everybody thought that ball was going out of bounds even Minnesota Rares kind of stopped running forward there Aurora will reset things back to Kafusi as the challenge comes in from behind on Del Moro. French looking for space to shoot, still got a shot off. It's cleared out for a Minnesota throw as we enter the I know eight minutes and change of this match. Good defending there against Sophie French. You could see she was trying to get that shot off for a couple different steps there, uh, multiple steps. So really good defending just to keep her feet, not let Sophie get a clean shot off. Just really good defending. Back to Langdock. Aurora will change the angle of the attack. Now here's Ostrom. Del Moro plays French into an empty area. French wants that cross and just runs out of room across that end line. A goal kick upcoming. Aurora will Aurora will stay in the land of 10,000 lakes for their upcoming fixture. A match with Bavarian United coming up Saturday. Bavarian, a, a shocking result in their last match. A 2-1 loss to Chicago Dutch Lions. In spite of that, as a whistle sounds from Ryan Farrell, they do enter tied for second in the Heartland table with 13 points. Pulled a result out in three of their last four matches, and they do have the second most goals scored of any team in the Heartland. Yeah, this is where the back half of the season becomes really interesting because there are players who are shifting around. They might not have a full roster. They might not travel every player, and vice versa. Some teams travel better than they do playing at home or vice versa so it's really difficult to know you know what's going to happen with each game and that's why the end of the season becomes so important like we said for those even single point games Bavarian United one of the 21 newcomers to the USLW this season they do have a very robust infrastructure as a club one of the oldest soccer organizations in America and talking about that goal scoring, though, for Bavarian, five multi-goal matches. Kate Cullison leads the team with three goals. Haley Block and Brooke Parnello each with two. There's another whistle and a foul. Mulaney just coming back here, trying to go shoulder to shoulder. Kind of caught her off guard, mid-bounce. Definitely a foul. I think a good call by the ref there. Now 
Alberts forward with it to Prentice, and a difficult challenge applied from behind by Ostrom. That will win a free kick for Green Bay. Late in the game, the physicality becomes really, really important. This is an opportunity for Green Bay that really came from just defense on Minnesota Aurora being a step behind, causing a foul, and now here they have a goal-scoring opportunity. Really dangerous. Myla Stewart will take this. That broke just to the right, but that was a screamer mark for goal yeah, for the was, Western Illinois product. That was a really, really impressive strike there. I think had she, she, I don't think Taylor Kane was expecting a shot from that. So had that been a little bit more on target, I think it it made a it maybe would have made Taylor Kane make a pretty impressive save there. The only other Heartland Division tie taking place this evening, Rochester FC, RKC, Third Coast. Third Coast up 3-1 right now on the Loons. Raph continuing to fight off that challenge. RKC has had some impressive results this year. Uh, they have been fairly inconsistent, but still they have pulled through with some really, really impressive results. RKC, their only win of the season came against this Green Bay side earlier this year. Looking to make it six points in the league table and move into a tie with Chicago Dutch Lions for the fifth place spot. And that loss against Green for Green Bay was probably a loss that really hurt them. Nice run on the overlap here, taking it wide, but the flag is up. That was Anna Boyd who just shifted past Taylor Kane. Really, really lucky there for Minnesota Aurora. What a wonderful run by Green Bay, slicing across the back line there. You can see in this replay, I mean, just slicing right across the front side of um, Kelsey Kafusi. Kafusi was kind of caught off guard going one direction. The ball came back the other. Really wonderfully, wonderful play by Green Bay. And again, Minnesota Aurora getting really lucky not to have a goal there. As we approach the final handful of minutes here in this match, Danny, your impressions on the way Minnesota handled changing formations, how they responded to some adversity? Well, they clearly like this formation. You can see it encourages a lot of creativity, a lot of players playing in different parts of the field that you might not typically see them. A lot of overloading on one side of the field, um, which makes it really, really difficult for teams to defend that because often you're like, what do I do here? Am I supposed to pull back, you know, my center mid? Am I supposed to pull back an outside mid? How do I handle this? Or a center back is getting pulled across. I mean, it just makes it really difficult to defend. In saying that, I think they are still trying to figure out how to play consistent for 90 minutes. I think that this is a challenge that we have seen for Minnesota Aurora. They have moments of beautiful, beautiful soccer, but can they do it for 90 minutes? Can they be as clean as possible? Can they keep the ball on the ground? Um, that's gonna be the challenge going into playoffs, I think, for them. Zbilic, plenty of space to move forward with it. Ball caroms back to Mullaney. Spielich. And that shot takes a hop into the midst of Larissa Likes. Two minutes of added time here at the end of this 5-0 lead for Minnesota Aurora. I would say in many ways this game could be more than a 5-0 game. 
and in weird ways, it could also be less. I know that that sounds really silly, but Green Bay has had its moments. They have had their opportunities. Uh, they've had chances to get a goal back or two. Um, I also think on the other side, Minnesota Aurora has had moments where they could have made this a 7-0 game. So uh, this has been a very back-and-forth game. Both teams have fought really, really hard and have made adjustments based on what their opponent is giving them. And for that, I respect both sides in this match. It's been a really fun game to watch. Almost like a chess match is how it's felt today. It really has. No, I agree with that. I, I think it's important for people watching this match to not necessarily look at what the final score will be because it's not indicative of how competitive of a match at times Green Bay threw Minnesota's way and vice versa. Yeah, that's right. And I know there are watch parties happening all over the city right now and shout out to everybody who stayed with it um, but it, it has been a really fun game to watch in a different venue than I think what all of us were expecting today but um, you know still we're happy to see Minnesota Aurora we're happy to see Green Bay back here again this rival rivalry continues to grow and I know that that's something both clubs are really excited about we're starting to develop some history I have to admit, though, I was I saw rumblings of a teal out on Twitter. It was very sad that I didn't get to see that play out in real time. However, it is for the best for everybody to shift this indoors. There is the whistle from Ryan Farrell, full time at the St. Croix Valley Recreational Center. A 5-0 win for Minnesota. Four different goal scorers for Aurora. They improved to 7-0-0, an incredibly strong start to 2023 as they approach the back half of the schedule. Green Bay falls to 3-3-0. They've now lost three of their last four. As we take a look at our player of the game presented by the Star Tribune. And it's Abby Ostrom. Abby Ostrom, a wonderful, wonderful game for her. Obviously leading to a penalty kick. She was solid defensively, getting in the attack. Uh, she was one of the players that we saw all 90 minutes, so really impressive play by her. I love to see her in the attacking half with the ball in her foot, drawing defenders out, drawing a PK, obviously leading to a goal, so... Really wonderful play by her. Abby Ostrom, the player of the match.